Are we live? We're live. We're live right now. Awesome. We're live. Welcome, everyone that's checking us out live right now or later on while we're on YouTube. This is the fourth annual, not annual, the fourth, <laughs> <laughs> the fourth water cooler from the ancillary characters. We're just going to chat it up about a few things. Mm. Our topics tonight include, but are not limited to necessarily, our own origins more clearly stated, as well as our favorite superhero origins. But first, we have a letter from our good friend from the Twitterverse, um, Ad Custom, or Andrew, as we like to call him. That's that's our name for him, Andrew. Sent us a letter entitled Current Pull List. We, don't, we sadly didn't get to it in time because we went a little too far with our book it, but we're going to get to it now. It reads as follows. Hey, guys, how's everyone doing? We're doing well. Good, I'm good. I'm great. Uh, Fantastic. I don't really have any quote unquote origin or quote unquote Disney Lucasfilm related questions. Although I will say that I'm very bullish about the Disney Lucasfilm deal. What, is, what does he mean, bullish? Hmm. I don't know. Um, I'm just interested to hear each of your current pull lists. If it's super long, maybe just list your top ten must-haves each month. I'd love to hear some sleepers too. Thanks, Brotatoes, Andrew. Okay, let's let's bust through this so we can get to the origin stuff. Alan, start us off. Uh, okay, so I'm actually pulling up Comicsology so I can list mine. So that's I was a I'll bad go. choice. Yeah. I'm gonna say. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll start off with uh, let me let me think. From Image, I buy Glory. I buy Peter Panzerfaust. I buy what else do I get month to month? Indie. Well, I'm buying the Rocketeer mini right now. Marvel Daredevil. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Wolverine and the X Men. Sorry, hold on. The <laughs> Wolverine and the X Men. Um, let me think. <laughs> What? Incredible Hulk. Mm -hmm. um, this is hard. Off of going off memory. From DC, <laughs> it's Flash, Batman Incorporated, Aquaman, um, Supergirl is really good. Um, there's, there's, Ethan, you have not read a single issue in that Ooh. series. Um, so, you know what? I'll, I'll tell you this, Andrew. If you haven't already, go read Fables. I'm just rereading all the fables, and I forgot how good fables is. And I'm also that's a that's your sleeper. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fables is my sleeper. It's a great book. Okay. No, um, let me think. I'm trying to think of like something I could tell him that's like a sleeper book that's awesome. Frankenstein. Frankenstein's a great book. Go, go buy all the back. it is, but go buy <laughs> the back issues of Frankenstein. Awesome. I liked how I liked how Seth was like, Alan, give me the reins. Uh, well, no, I, I just was trying to keep this going. Uh, Alan, are you ready? I, I'm ready. Go. Okay, so Do I'm it. just going to read off of my comicsology that I use to keep up with it. Action Comics, Amazing Spider-Man, America's Got Powers, Animal Man, Aquaman, Avengers, AVX, which is past, Avenging Spider-Man, AVX Consequences, which is almost over, Batgirl, Batman, Batman and Robin, Batman Incorporated, Batman the Dark Knight, all the Before Watchmen's, Daredevil, Demon Knights, Detective Comics, Dial H, Earth 2, Fantastic Four, and FF, which are past, Flash, Green Lantern, Green Lantern Core, Hawkeye, Justice League, Justice League Dark, New Avengers, Nightwing, Phantom Lady, Phantom Stranger, Secret Avengers, Shade, Spider-Man, which is past, Superboy, Supergirl, mm -hmm. Superman, Swamp Thing, Talon, Teen Titans, TMNT, TMNT Micro Series, Thief of Thieves, <laughs> Uncanny Avengers, Wonder Woman, World's Finest, and all of the at least number one Marvel Now books. So why do you? Why does it seem like you're reviewing the same books every episode? Then you you buy Phantom Lady, and I've never heard you review it on the show. It was a choice between that and Turtles, and I expected Paul to take the annual, so I took the annual instead since he didn't. But I'm planning to review it either next show or whenever the uh, the final issue of the, the series wraps. Right. Yeah, it's it's only got one more left, so I was going to wait till the whole thing is done. Ethan, what do you get? Okay. Well, um, Andrew, my list is kind of short. I buy mostly 
graphic novels and mostly hardcovers, so I tend to just wait on stuff. But what I am actually picking up is uh, All Star Western. I really like that. It's really cool how he's gone back and actually put a better origin, and he's actually doing an ongoing series rather than just one shots on Jonah Hex. Um, uh, Rachel Rising. I'm reading that every time it comes out. That's really good. I hope you're reading that. I think you are. I'm reading Chew, and I am reading uh, Amakami Girls. And that's my list. Amakami Girls. In a Amakami World. Really? And wow. Joker. Is this happening right now? Okay. Oh, that's weird. That's <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I am... I'm reading Action Comics, Amazing Spider-Man, Aquaman, Batgirl, Batman, Batman and Robin, Batman Incorporated, Batman the Dark Knight, Demon Knights, Detective Comics, Earth 2, The Flash, Green Lantern, Hawkeye, Justice League, Daredevil, The Phantom Stranger, uh, Superman, Swamp Thing, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Uncanny Avengers, and Wonder Woman. I'm also buying the Smallville digital comic because I'm a sucker. You're actually, the last few issues of that have actually been really good, surprisingly. But uh, Sleeper, I don't know. That's kind of a hard one to throw on me. Hmm. Mostly because all of Paul's comics are, are top 10. DC? Top 15, top 20. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. I would say Demon Knights. Yeah, that's a good one. I would one. call that a Sleeper because people Definitely. are pretty much passing that up. And yep. it's fantastic. Agreed. And it's gonna at the rate it's going, he's gonna be gone. So, yeah. snatch it up before he leaves. All right, superhero origins. We talked about our origins, didn't we? Um, the origin of our friendship. <laughs> one of the previous about. episodes. So let's talk about yeah. how we got into comics. Then, you want to do that? Is that the way to go? Let's yeah, that's what I was Paul. thinking. Paul, yeah. you have the best story, I think, because of your dad. Okay. All right. So basically, from a very young age. Superheroes and comics were a big deal in my house because my dad always read comics, particularly Marvel comics growing up. But it, when I was a kid, it was like the perfect time to get into superheroes and cartoons because of you know the, the old X-Men cartoon, Batman the Animated Series, the Spider-Man Animated Series, Superman the Animated Series, um, all these shows, and obviously Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from when I was very young. And... Uh, my dad always would watch this stuff with me, and it, it was always cool because we'd be watching X-Men, and he knew all about their continuity and everything that had happened, so we'd be sitting here watching X-Men, and some ancillary character would show up <laughs> on the screen, and he would commence to tell me all of their, uh, you know, their backstory and you know, how he read this comic with them and how this stuff happens later, and it was just really exciting to me as a kid. Uh, sadly, that was really the extent of my involvement with comics up until I was probably 16 years old, 15 or 16 years old, because where I lived, the closest comic shop was at least an hour away. I mean, there, there just isn't one where I'm from. And so I, I never had that opportunity until I got a little older and, you know, started making a little money, you know, with like a part-time job. And I'd go to a bookstore and I'd start buying, you know, trade paperbacks. I read, you know, random Superman comics and I read The Long Halloween and books like these, you know, that were, the ones that everyone said you needed to read. I uh, read Hush, and uh, actually read all the Jeff Loeb, Tim Sale, Batman books of Baltimore and read them. And then, you know, I read, like, uh, Breakout by Bendis with New Avengers and uh, read some Ultimate Spider-Man, stuff like that. So I started getting into trade, but um, my foray into weekly slash monthly comics didn't happen until... Uh, as we mentioned in our last Origins episode, I come in contact with Seth and these fellas, these fine gents, and uh, Seth lent me boxes of trade paperbacks and hardcovers and single issues, and next thing you know, I'm buying monthly, and uh, I ain't never going back, you know what I'm saying? Now, the, this would be a good time, Paul, for us to throw in the origin of this podcast, Yeah, which is that uh, uh, we... Paul and I, what, like five, four years ago? Four years ago? Something like that. Yeah, four, four years, years ago, Paul ago, and I, I Paul and I decided to do a uh, a podcast, and we started a, 
a blog spot called well I'd already ha had a blog mm -hmm. called Seth versus the Flying Saucers so we just hosted the podcast kind of off there and we called the podcast the Flying Saucer Cast which I think right. we only recorded I think we recorded like 10 episodes but we only ever released 7 and I don't know of a way you can find those they're not really I have them. To you do? <laughs> I do Alan has them all all of them? I think so. I'll have to check for sure, but I've got them on my computer somewhere. I'm pretty sure. I'll tell you what. If you can Dropbox me, drop, <laughs> Dropbox me those. I'm going to maybe I'll release those here and there, uh, kind of spread yeah. out, and as just kind of a special, <laughs> That'd special be cool. thing for the uh, for the ancillary characters. But that was a show that Paul and I did. And the problem with that show is that we had no schedule. We just kind of were doing it whenever we could, and mm -hmm. because of that, we just kind of quit recording eventually because we just weren't yeah. holding ourselves to any kind of schedule. and Yeah, we had no structure. Yeah, and there was no... The, the, like, the format of the podcast was non-existent. It was basically just like we no. would start the show and Paul and I would talk about Grant Morrison's Batman for, like, two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty every much. show. Every single show. Pretty much. Was. So... Um, that that's it. We we did that, and then last year when the new Fifty Two kicked off, Paul and I started buying mm -hmm. comics again. And we were like, well, let's do a website together. And then once we yeah. got the website going, we were like, well, let's do the podcast. So last February, I think we put out our first episode, right? Mm -hmm. And then yep. we're almost we're we're gonna we're at thirty six episodes, so we're fast approaching a solid year's worth of content, which is pretty awesome. It's exciting. Yeah. I don't know, Alan. What about you? What's your What's your origin? Okay. Well, my origin. I started out. Well, first, I want to say, whenever I was before comics, I was always into all the nerdy stuff like Nintendo, video games. Uh, I always liked comic book movies. I liked Star Wars. You know, all that stuff. But I think I was the only person in my small town who was. Uh, nobody at school. Nobody else cared any one bit about it. So most of my knowledge that prohibited me from getting into comic books for one there was no comic shop for two there's nobody to give me suggestions about comic books or even you know let me know that they still existed because I honestly didn't know I thought they were just things from the past for a while <laughs> uh, well then one day uh, Batman came out the Dark Knight the it was 2007 or 8 8 wasn't eight. it 8 yeah, 8 so 2008, I was just about to start college, and my dad wanted to do something with me just to hang out, so we went and watched The Dark Knight in Marion's Little Theater. And that got me really interested in Batman. Uh, I'd seen the animated series before. I'd seen Justice League, the cartoon. I'd seen uh, you know, the Tim Burton movie. But that really made me think Batman is awesome, and I love Batman. But what caught my eye was the uh, preview for Watchmen in it. And that tied back to a moment of my youth. I used to visit internet forums, and that's how I got most of my nerdy news. But even in the internet forums, it was mostly video games, and not a lot of people were hardcore in the comics. But I saw Rorschach in the Watchmen preview, and I remembered that was an avatar of somebody in the forums that I knew from way back when. So I thought, I want to Google this. So I looked up Watchmen and how it was like the changing point for comics or whatever. So I ordered Watchmen off Amazon. First book, comic book I've ever read. Besides like manga. I'd read manga before then. And, you know, it was pretty cool, but it, I'm not a huge Watchmen fan. So then I found out that the Dark... Somebody told me that The Dark Knight was based on The Dark Knight Returns. Somebody in a, com in a forum who wasn't really into comics. Turned out that was false. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, I but the second graphic novel I read was The Dark Knight Returns. I read that and loved it. Thought it was the best thing ever. And still, it's one of my top books ever. Yeah. Partially for nostalgia, partially because it's just dope. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, shortly after that, I believe that happened in the summer of 2008. And around April of 2009, I think that's whenever Paul and I started talking and hanging out. We were at Youth Rally at my church. And he had come down from hit with his youth group, and we just, he was wearing a superhero shirt or something. We just struck up a conversation at one point. It was a TMN t shirt. It was a TMN t shirt. Yes, Paul it was. Remembers. This was a, this was an event. 
for it Indeed. kicked off many, many things from this point on. This is one of those things in history where if somebody were going to go back in time to change the future, this is one of those times. Don't do that, time travelers, because I will Yeah, please. Uh, <laughs> so, in any case, uh, Paul was great because he was able to tell me, go read this, go read that. To this point, the only things I had read were Watchmen, The Dark Knight Returns, and I think The Long Halloween. I'm pretty sure I'd read that because uh, I, I occasionally wandered into a Walden books and looked at the graphic yeah. novel section and just picked stuff at random. But I was afraid to spend money because I was a poor college student freshman without a job. So I, having somebody to tell me, go spend this, go, go buy this, read this, help me know, you know, I can spend my money on this without a risk. So he introduced me to so many books. I think Infinite Crisis and all the tie-ins was one of the first things he told me to buy in Crisis on Infinite Earths. And then that eventually led into uh, Final Crisis and Blackest Nights. And this collection that you can kind of see behind me was built from Paul. And then Seth I, I met shortly after that. I think it was like just a month later, so he helped as well. And then about two years later, I started buying monthly just two or three books and then build up to that long pull list I listed just a second ago. And that is my – oh, at one point, I found a piece of kryptonite, oh. and that's my other origin, but I'll save that for later. That's how I can <laughs> do my little secret stuff. So you're like but, everyone in the first season of Smallville. Basically. <laughs> but Oh, and I want to give a shout-out to my friend, Lee Wilson-Withers, who just Facebooked me to say that he's watching our show live. So Sweet. Okay. Ethan? My mom wanted me to send a shout out to her, but I forgot to during the. <laughs> Hi, mom. I don't even. She's probably asleep by now. Hey, Seth and Ethan's mom. <laughs> <laughs> My mom says she enjoys listening to us because she finds it very comforting. <laughs> my apparently, my dad. Uh, two episodes ago, we sang "Happy Birthday" to Paul, and my dad was watching it, and apparently, he said, "Oh, this is awful." This is just horrible, and he shut off his computer. <laughs> wow. Huh. He's offended. Wow. <laughs> we, we offended my dad so much. Um, my uh, story starts with my sister, Carrie, who bought uh, Batman uh, during the 90s. She bought, um, she bought the old Robin, Tim Drake Robin uh, run, and she bought uh, Chris Claremont, Jim Lee, X-Men. And She bought a lot of X-Men. I was actually the one who was getting the problem. All right, well, whatever. Um, Seth was a thief, as you just heard. He, he I'll get into that. <laughs> <laughs> Seth has a lot of thievery stories. Just keep going. <laughs> okay. Uh, and when I was younger, uh, I was really into military stuff, so I loved G.I. Joe. Like, everything G.I. Joe. I just loved it. And Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. In fact, Seth and I used to write a comic, if you will, um, called Funny Money, Funny Money Monkey Magazine. And in Funny Money yeah, Monkey... I didn't know we were going to do this. Funny Money Monkey Magazine, we would illustrate situations with these monkeys getting into mayhem. Wow. And basically, I would usually just draw an airplane with a monkey riding on it and... The flames and stuff. We had characters such as Wimpy and Joe. Yeah, and Wimpy and Joe. The Baronator, <laughs> who was kind of a, a bear, a teddy bear version of Terminator. Yes. And we would we would actually wow. print this off on my parents' uh, Xerox machine. That was for business purposes only. And we would staple issues together and sell them for five cents. True. Um, wow. <laughs> so like, that, that was comics for me. Mostly my sister's comics I would just picture flip. Like I would look and like I wouldn't read. I would just look at the art, which, you know, looking back on those Chris Claremont, Jim Lee ones, I can distinctly remember looking at every issue. And also with the Robin ones and a lot of the old Batman stuff. Um, and then, you know, my sister fell out with comics because uh, the Age of Apocalypse she hated, and she got, like, really offended over that, and she got upset that um, when Batman's... She got upset over Nightfall, or 
Night's End. What was the return? Night's I End, remember. I think. She got upset over that, so she quit reading comics. So, like, my comics ceased. And, like I said in our episode, um, I was at Star Wars Episode One. I saw a guy wearing a cool shirt I wanted. I went to the comic book store, and I saw that they were putting out Ultimate X-Men. And it was only, like, on issue six. And I was like, I, I talked to the guy who worked there, and I was like, hey, what's that? And he's like, they're retelling all the X-Men stories. And I was like, ooh, I really love X-Men, and I know a lot about them from the, the, the TV show and stuff like that and from looking at my sister's comics and whatnot. So I started, I started buying Ultimate X-Men, and I bought as many as I could. And I also... I, like I was in a comic book store, so I would look around, and I saw GI Joe back issues. So I started picking up like every GI Joe back issue I could, so I could once again like see those comics that I would see as a young man. Um, and that's really how I got into comics. Like uh, there, there were periods where I didn't read comics, but like <coughs> I got Seth into comics. Um, hey, don't spoil <laughs> my origin. No, I'm not. Uh, when I was when I was in Iraq, so he had to buy comics for me. So it was kind of like both of us together were getting into comics through the mutual understanding where he had to go buy them and then ship them to me and whatnot. Um, and that's my comic story, I suppose. I'm in the same way as Ethan. I, I started out because my sister used to buy X-Men, and I would I can remember like long afternoons sitting on the porch, on my parents' porch, uh, reading like oh, X Men comics and being horrified by the things I would see, <laughs> um, but I got there used to be a little uh, bookstore in a town not far from where my parents where I grew up, and I would walk or ride my bike there with friends. And um, when I was a kid, I used to go in there and I would take uh, books. Just basically. take them. I would I would always carry a backpack and I would kind of take some of the books home with me. Sometimes you would buy like a dollar book. Sometimes I'd buy one dollar book and I would shove. What they would do is they would bag and board the comic, and so I'd take one of the bagged and board comics and I'd stick like six other comics in there, and I'd pay for the dollar comic and take home like seven comics. But most of the time I would take stuff and then return it after I'd read it. But a lot of the stuff that I borrowed was like old uh, Star Wars comics. And like Dark Empire, I can remember reading, but I really got into Tim Drake, Robin, all the Chuck Dixon, like Robin stuff. And Batman was always my obsession as a little kid. I loved Batman, especially the 1960s Adam West show uh, and the Batman cartoon. So I think the thing that really got me into comics originally was Batman because that was my childish obsession. And um, I quit reading. I, Actually, honestly, I never quit reading. If I had a comic I hadn't read or whatever, I would read it, but I knew nothing about comics, really, for about 10 years. And then back in, I want to say, what year was that you left? Like 2003. 2003, yeah. 2003, uh, Ethan bought me a, actually, I have it sitting right here, the Batman Ultimate Guide to the Dark Knight. Ethan bought me that um, from Borders. Uh and for some reason that Rest in peace. Kept, yeah that kept talking <laughs> RIP borders uh, that kept talking about no man's land which got me curious to find out what no man's land is so I started buying issues of no man's land and eventually I amassed like this collection of single issues every single no man's land tie in which is like a hundred and I don't know how many it's a ton of comics I had all those and that was kind of what kicked it off I started buying monthly maybe like five or six months later, I started with Jeff Johns. Um, he was the first person who I became aware of as being, you know, a name, a comic name that I could follow, a creator. And I read J J JSA and Flash. And then I got into Jeff Loeb, and, you know, from there it kind of spiraled out of control. And then within a year, I was spending 100 a week easy on comics. And it was just getting more and more crazy. So that's my big origin. The, the big comic book, like what I think cemented my love of like comic books was Ethan and I went to um, Wizard World Los Angeles, which we've talked about on the show before, but that was where like 
we got to meet all the creators we were following and talk to people and buy comics, and we met other comic book fans and hung out with them. And, and at the time, Seth and I had um, we had ideas of becoming writers. Yeah, and we were working on a comic. While I was in Iraq, he would call me, and I would sit down like uh, as little time as I had, and I would spit ideas off of him for this comic we had and other comics that we wanted to do. Um, one of the books I just I remembered, this was one of the books that Seth stole. <laughs> <laughs> and this is like just an anthology, and uh, it's a lot of covers are in here. And this was one of the things I just used to stare at for hours. I would just look at covers and flip through it, because I'd never read it. I don't even know <laughs> what's in this thing. But I would just... I would just look and look and look at it for hours. Yeah, as a kid, I don't think you, I don't think you think about the importance of art to a kid. Like a kid isn't going to care what is being written in that comic most of the time. Right. Especially a Batman. You're just uh, that the visual appeal of comics. And, yeah, that's kid. what they want that, to see. That's that when I've reread the old Larry Hama GI Joes, my sister was buying those also, and when I've reread them, I remember panel by panel. Like I can I can call to memory entire issues. Yeah, G.I. Joe and I were both really into as a kid as kids. Begging our grandma to buy us. Yeah, I read all those Larry <laughs> Hammer comics, all those Uncle Scrooge comics. Yeah. All that stuff. Archie Archie Digest. Archie Digest. Those, yeah. We used to have boxes of those. Yeah. But um all right, let's get into superhero origins. Now, I don't know how we want to do this. We kind of want to do it like last week. I think we just kind of blab about superhero origins. And as long as we're starting off, I'm just going to mention that the Rocketeer was essentially, you know, this first, like, th three stories or whatever in the Rocketeer is just straight up origin, and it's classic, like, superhero origin. Yeah. We meet the character as a regular dude. You see him get the power, which in that case is a rocket pack. You see him make the decision. The hilarious thing about the Rocketeer is he's never really like, I'm going to go do the right thing, you know, for justice or something. It's just he's like... money grubbing. It's just, he wants it's to just his girl. dude who's like chasing his girl around the country and then keeps getting thrown into these situations, like these hapless situations. He's very Indiana jones -ish. And it, he, he is not a good superhero. No. He's beat up that entire, yeah, <laughs> entire He's like comic. Peter Parker to the max. Yeah. And as long as we're talking about Peter Parker... You know, that's. I kind of think of Peter Parker as being the quintessential superhero origin. Does anyone agree? Disagree? I agree. Yeah. That was going to be my top superhero origin if we went in that direction. Mm -hmm. Now, mine is Batman. I. I can I, I I not that I can identify, but I can identify. I love my parents, and, <laughs> and as a kid, I remember that that affected me emotionally, like the way he mm. dealt with that. And I always felt like if my parents too were killed, that I would I would go out and avenge them. I too would put on the cape and cowl. Yes, and avenge them. <laughs> so that to me was always yeah, no doubt. Kind of <laughs> one of the essential origins. Wow. And for me, I was going to say Superman simply because it's like there's just so much about the origin of Superman that's kind of classic in a way. I mean, he's, he's from another planet, yeah, but you have to take into consideration that he, the thing that formates who he is is not just, oh, well, he's an alien, but the fact that he was raised by good people. You know what I'm saying? He's kind of like the antithesis to Batman's story. Batman lost his parents as a young child. Superman lost his parents too, but then he had like these surrogate, the surrogate family that basically took over for him. Whereas Batman never had that. And Batman goes to the dark side of things and you know seeking vengeance. Whereas Superman, because of the morals that he was brought up in, you know, kind of wants to stand for what is good and right and everything, which is what draws. What's that's kind of the thing that drew me into reading comics was. Probably Superman was in his origin and everything is what made me want to go read more comics. I enjoy Batman comics more than I enjoy Superman comics most of the time, but Superman as a character is what kind of drew me into going after him. Does that make sense? Yeah, his his origin is it probably a lot of people think that Superman's origin is the best Superman story you can tell. And that's the problem with the character. If you start yeah. out at this high point, it's hard to go anywhere from there. I don't really agree. I think there's a lot you can do with that character. Yeah. But 
I do think his his origin is great. It's there's so much there's so much to it. You know, yeah. it's with with Peter Parker, he got bit by a spider. With Batman, mm-hmm. his parents got killed. With Superman, well, his planet blew up, and then he was rocketed to Earth and adopted by this kindly family. And then he had to find the rocket and learn about his history on this mm-hmm. planet. He gets these powers. You know, it's this it's an amazing story. And then yeah. you have to, you know, make the decision to use those powers for good. And he does so because of his upbringing. It is a great, like, that's a great origin mm-hmm. story. Yeah, I absolutely. also kind of like, I, I'm a, I'm a nut for the Fantastic Four, but their origin I love. Like, it's so... Cheesy? Yeah, it's so perfectly <laughs> 60s. You know, they're going yeah. into outer space and they're... Adventurers. Maybe, yeah, and they... they, they space they, people. They steal a rocket, <laughs> go into outer space, get hit by Cosmic Grays, come back. The hilarious thing about the Fantastic Four is it's like all these, you know, like... The, the the human tourist Johnny he can turn into you know flame and and Mr. Fantastic he can stretch and uh, the Sue she's invisible but then the thing is just gets the horrible end of that yeah. stick because he's <laughs> he's a rock cur- cursed to be this <laughs> horrific rock creature for the rest of his life and yeah you know, I don't know that's always been one of my favorites so what what makes a good superhero origin well, for me, um, I'm actually different from you guys in that one of my favorite origins is actually the GSA. And I almost mentioned that, actually. Okay. Like, I, I love like all their collected origins together and mm-hmm. how the, they were Nazi fighters and stuff like that. Um, like, I can't really just buckle down and say one because I like all of them, <laughs> like, especially the 19... 19- 40s JSA. Uh, you know, like a lot of times you just see people going with the flow when they write these origins. So it's usually like someone is in peril, like a family member or something, and somebody has to step up, or somebody has a traumatic accident which turns them into something, or they're a mutant. Yeah, it's like mm-hmm. tragedy. It's either tragedy or revenge. Like mm-hmm. they're, they're, they're yeah. and I'm probably missing something, but it seems like it's one of those two things. Like, Happenstance or revenge? Yeah. Except really with Fantastic Four, I mean, you know, they get affected by these cosmic things, yeah. but nobody dies a horrific death for which they well, the go thing, out to try. And, the thing well, is yeah, the thing gets turned into a giant rock monster. But they're they're not, you know, they're superheroes, but they're adventurers. Like they're I'm trying scientists. to think of those. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like an example of a bad or like a lame origin. Well, one of the hardest ones to follow is Wolverine because it's constantly changing. Yeah, but that's become yeah. that's almost become kind of endearing to me. <laughs> like I kind of like that. But like what about, what's a, what can you guys think of like anything that's a bad like an example of like a stupid origin? Here's a here's a neat idea. Legion of Super. <laughs> here's a neat idea that somebody had um, with uh, uh, Casey from the Young Avengers. That was a neat idea, how she got her origin. Okay, like, but I'm saying like an, I know, an but, example of a bad one. Okay, I was saying that was good. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of anything like off the top a of my head. A bad origin. There's, there's a ton of stupid, silly origins. What's Green Arrows? Oh my gosh. I'm guessing his is Green <laughs> Arrows is actually kind of cool, because he's marooned on that island, and he's basically Robinson Caruso, but then he becomes... Yeah, that's cool. You know, like, I think that's cool. I just hate that character, yeah, even man. though the show is great. Um, shows, that show is fantastic. I don't hate that character. I cannot stand that it. Show's really good. That show's really good. That show's really good. Yeah, I like them in <laughs> stuff. I've never read a Green Arrow book. Like, I can't think of anything. For some reason, off the top of my head, I can't think of anything. Like, there's a thousand characters with ridiculous silly origins in uh, Robert Kirkman's Invincible. But it's so tongue in cheek that like he's blatantly aware, you know, that he's writing. And a lot of them are play on. Yeah, a lot of them are spoofs of popular origins. For some reason, like I'm just racking my brain. Daredevil like, is kind of weird. Like he gets hit in Daredevil. The eye. I I love Daredevils. I've never read it. I've only heard it described. So well, anything, I don't know. The details. Anything that relates to a parent, for some reason, appeals to me. So like with. Him, you know, his dad was this boxer, and he was paid to throw a fight, but he didn't because his son was in the crowd, or maybe he was just a good man. So he, he, uh, you know, he throws this fight, and then his son 
walks in front or like tries to help this man who's crossing the street and gets doused in the face with radioactive chemicals and becomes this, you know. See, I, I just know, know the radioactive part. Or, or Marvel, yeah, he gets super senses in a way, but yeah. not really. Like he doesn't really have superpowers. I can't really think of a a bad one, but I can think of a really good one, and <laughs> that's uh, Jack from Starman. Starman. Jack Knight Starman is like how his. His dad, the original Starman, gives the torch to his brother, and his brother ends up dying. And how, do, how does he get the staff or the torch? I can't remember. His dad just—I I think he just has one. No, wait. His dad is his dad is captured, and he's going to die, so he has to go steal the torch. Like I think that's mm-hmm. really cool. Like how he wasn't originally Starman. Starman is is like the entire series is his origin, and then at the end he leaves and quits, yeah. and he's done. Yeah. It, and yeah. like so, you get this great origin story that never really. But I mean, it's not that it just doesn't go anywhere. But it's a concise story. But it doesn't. He, it's this fantastic origin that made me think of um, something else, which now I can't remember. Oh boy, how about that? <laughs> I, I just totally blanked. <laughs> um, if you're going I to, a... uh, I was going to say, if you're going to off of that, uh, reco- uh, like I was like I was going to say requests. That's not the right word. If you're going to, it's totally. I can't think of the word. Like, recommend. Recommend. That's the word. It just totally left. I couldn't. I, that, that's the word. Couldn't get it. If you're gonna recommend a good origin story to go out and buy and read, what's it gonna be? Hmm. Now, are we talking about? Because like the, some of those '60s origins are hard to go back and read. Like the some Fantastic of them are, Fours, obviously. But if you're gonna read like a modern retelling of it, there are some. The problem is that some of these origins get old. I get sick of hearing the same origin story over and over. Like, as much as I like Peter Parker's, I'm sick of hearing it. But if I'm going to tell someone, wouldn't, is Spider, what's Spider-Man Blue? Is that an origin? That's not really uh, an origin. Okay, I'm going to say, I'll just say that I think the best or, the best modern retelling of an origin would be Batman Year One. Uh, In my opinion, like, that's, Batman Year One, I would say is my. That's a really good one. Mm. Actually, actually, those year ones, I uh, I actually reviewed them a couple times. Chuck Dixon. Yeah, Chuck Dixon Scott and Beatty. yeah, and then art by like Marcos Martin. Those are both really good. The the uh, yeah. Batgirl. Batgirl and the Robin, Robin. one. Mm. Um, there was a Nightwing one. I never read it because it looked horrible. <laughs> I don't know. We've recommended Batman Earth one a few times. That's that's you know it's very modern, but it's really good too. It's Hulk an origin story. Gray is an origin story. Yeah, Hulk Gray is It is. Hulk um, Gray is a good one. Superman actually, for all seasons. Oh, yeah. that's my, that's, that's it. I, that's going to overtake, that's, that's one of my favorite books. Mine too. Invincible Family Matters. Yeah, the, one. the first story yeah, arc of Invincible is a great origin story. Yeah. I like that one. Completely unpredictable. Yeah. Just changes on you out of nowhere. <laughs> uh, so, um, I actually got a tweet from Craig in Philly. He was saying that his favorite origin is the Savage Dragon, which I've never... The only time I've ever read Savage Dragon was when there was a crossover with Invincible. It's funny, because we had... I had Eric Larson sign... Yeah. For some reason, I owned (laughs) the first issue of Savage Dragon. I don't know why I had it. And I had Eric Larson sign it, and then I took... Ethan's picture with him. Yeah, shaking his hand. Yeah, with Eric Larson. <laughs> Ethan and Eric Larson shaking hands. But I never, I've never actually read any Savage Dragon. I remember when we met him, you said, "Hey, Ethan, that's uh, that's uh, Eric Larson, the writer of Savage Dragon." I'm like, "What?" <laughs> and he's like, "You know, the owner of um, my Image." He's like, yeah, one of, one of the owners of Image or whatever. And I was like, "Oh, Image." <laughs> uh, but anyways. Um, he would, uh, Craig would just really likes that origin. And he told me a little yeah. bit about it. Mm-hmm. Have you, you guys ever read Savage Dragon? Never heard of it. I've heard of it, but I, I, mean, I haven't read you're it. You're like me. <laughs> Ultimate Spider-Man. That's a good I didn't one. even think of Ultimate Spider-Man is a great retelling of, of Spider-Man's origin. Um, mm-hmm. Actually, all those Ultimate books early on, I know you guys don't like Ultimate X-Men that much, but um, I think... The f- I actually like Ultimate X-Men, and I love Ultimate Fantastic Four. If you guys haven't read Ultimate Fantastic Four, I have 
every volume of Ultimate Fantastic Four in trade, and I, I, I've always loved that book. I think it's criminally underrated. Um, underrated. The Ultimates too is kind of an or it's kind of Captain America's origin, if nothing else. The Ultimate mm -hmm. X Men, even though that's like what got me into comics, I remember I was so mad reading those um, origins and whatnot. I don't know why that's the comic that got me into comics, because that comic literally irates me. <laughs> irates you? Which one? What? Sorry, I was looking. Ult Ult Ultimate X Men. Okay, angers you. Whatever. I can I can use the English language how I want to. Okay, so <laughs> Don uh, Garvey yeah. Don Garvey tweeted us and said, "I love TMNT, but the original origin is really bad and a rip off <laughs> of another pretty bad one in Daredevil." First of all, Don, Daredevil is not a bad origin. It's a cool origin. It's about a little kid. He's thrust into this situation that he has no control over. Pass him to the eyeball. You know what? If you want to reread <laughs> Daredevil's origin in a really solid book, it is called Daredevil. I cannot read that. The Man Without Fear. It's uh, Frank Miller. It's by Frank Miller and John Romita Jr. And it's kind of a retelling of Daredevil's origin. And if you haven't yeah. read it, I suggest it to everyone. It's actually I need to read that. Yeah. And it's again, it's Frank Miller. It's Frank Miller, John Romita Jr., and Klaus Janssen. So it's it's basically the Batman Year One team. Hmm. What well, does the TMNT origin from the original series differ from the ooze and all that stuff that we know today? No. Okay. It's like the, I've, never, I've never read those. I feel before. like I feel like TMNT is a silly origin, but it's, it's silly. I don't think it's any. I don't. I I feel like when they wrote that, it was kind of purposely silly. Like I mean, the yeah. whole talking turtles and everything. You know, like, I know it was very serious and like stoic. That series is very. It's kind of. It's not self-important, but it isn't like tongue-in-cheek necessarily. At mm -hmm. least not early on. It was I supposed just saw to be another. Uh, no, go ahead, Alan. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, it wasn't it originally written to be like a uh, satire of comics yeah. and gritty, gritty reboots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was kind of a. Uh, I've I've read before. It was almost a spoof of Daredevil's origin. Um, um, we haven't. I I know I said Hulk great, but the Hulk has kind of one of those quintessential origins too, because it's you know it's this nerdy dude. Wandering onto an atomic testing site and becoming this horrific creature which, with no control over it. Now, which origin do you like better, Hulk from the comics or Hulk from the TV show? Is that was a TV show? Bill Bixby. Bill Bixby. <laughs> uh, wasn't he trying to cure cancer or something like that? <laughs> and he he shoots himself with a ray. He's trying to find a cure for bicycle rash. Oh, okay. But, well, maybe it was Heat Rash, and he was my mentor. You were my hero. Um, I just thought of another good one. Uh, uh, Alan and Paul, have you guys ever read G.I. Joe? Like any no. G.I. Joe? Not really. No. Storm Shadow and Storm and Shadow Snake and Snake Eyes origin is like one of like brotherly betrayal, and it's one of the, the really good. It's, it's our story. Yep. Snake Eyes right here. Storm Shadow over there. I'll take it. Light, dark. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I, and when you get into villain, you know, villain origins, there's some great villain origins. Like, so I've always... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's no way we I've can always, cover all those. Oh, we can, Paul. I, I can see you're wanting to leave to study, but, uh, but, man, let's just get into each superhero origin one uh, by one. Super let's, villain origins. Let's, let's not do that tonight. Uh, let's not. I I I've always liked um, uh, Lex Luthor's origin. I, mm -hmm. I love his interaction with with Superman, but I like the fact that he was just this normal dude too. So his origin is basically that he's jealous of Superman. Mm -hmm. And there's been like some him. great plays on his origin, uh, like in uh, Red. Uh, here's the thing though that just struck me about Red Sun. Sorry, here's the thing though that just hit me about villains. It's almost better when you don't know their origin sometimes. Like with some the of these guys, like when they try to when they try to describe to explain like why Doctor Doom is Doctor Doom, a lot of the time it just falls flat for me. Like I just want I just want Doctor Doom to be this dude in this metal mask who hates the Fantastic Four. But then you get good ones that are just silly, uh, like Sandman, <laughs> whose uh, oh, yeah. his mother was dying, yeah. so he turned to crime to pay for her, <laughs> her illness or whatever. 
<laughs> All right, we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up so Paul can go study uh, for his big yeah. Oh, harumph, harumph. Oof. All right. Um, if you have wrong. a favorite or a least favorite superhero origin, why don't you email in and tell us what it is, and we'll read it on the show next week. Uh, feel free to tweet at us. Visit us on the web at uh, ancillarycharacters.com. I'm not going to go through all the contact info again. Uh, tweet at us, though, ancillary tweets, and download the podcast on iTunes. Is anyone else joining me for Movember? By the way, I, I was the one who suggested it. Not this guy. Uh, is that no shave November? How, how long have you been growing facial hair, Seth? Because this is two days. This is about three. So um, I grow faster than you. Look at that. Le- lean in here, Seth. All right, no. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for um, tuning in to the. Uh, Join us for ancillary Movember. Yeah. Not we're not going to shave our mustaches. Or the. Ex- yeah, Except for me. Uh, I'm doing that. Beard? I'm shaving. You're going beard? Uh, Come on, Paul. Don't shave. Don't shave, man. Join us, Paul. Look, look Alan's not shaving. I just don't think shaving. I can do it. Why I've got to trim at least. I you can, can trim your neck. Really. Should we say you can trim your neck? I'm not trimming beard. anything. I'm pretty <laughs> sure I need to keep it clean for singing in the choir. Eh, just say you're going through a phase. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm they buy that. I'm going homeless. You know what? This is something we could discuss off air. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm shutting it down. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, everybody. Adios. We love you, Bye. and we'd like to hear about your origin too. Okay. Bye. Bye.